Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan, who is a corgi. And this is episode 52 of Conversations with a Corgi. And today we're going to continue talking about wraps for the legs. And we are going to explore the diagonal leg wrap. And also, I have a bit of an update for you about that T-Touch class in Rockville, Maryland, starting on the 12th, which is next week. Um, one of my friends was trying to get into the class, and because the pre-registration period had closed or something, he was having a hard time navigating the website. So if that is true for you, go ahead and call the main office in Santa Fe and talk to the people, actual humans there, that will answer the phone. And uh, you can still register for the class. It just might not be that easy with the website at this point because it's getting close. So if you do want to come for this wonderful opportunity to work with Linda Tellington in Rockville, Maryland at this wonderful facility with Pam Wanvier organizing it, it is a great opportunity. And there are still spaces in the class, so you may need to call the T-Touch office. And I don't know, can I give you that number? Um, let's just see if my old phone has that number. Yes, it's 800-854-8326. And again, the T-Touch office is 800-854-8326. So if you are interested in taking that class in Maryland next week, you can give them a call. They are in Santa Fe. Oh, you're falling off that side. And so be aware of the time difference from wherever you are calling from. Um, But it is still available for people to sign up and to bring your pets. So please check into that if you are at all interested. It is a great opportunity to work with Linda. I'm really looking forward to it. And there's tons of Airbnbs around there and hotels that take dogs. So it does offer a lot for someone who's interested in exploring this work more deeply. So as I said, today we're going to talk about the diagonal leg wrap. But I just want a quick review of what we did yesterday. We did the cross your heart wrap, which British Corgi is still modeling. We just brought the wrap around under the front legs and between them. He's wrinkled and crossed them over his heart and then brought them back up on the top and secured them with either a bow, um, a kid safety pin, not a regular one, or some Velcro you can also use. And that was the simplest bandage I showed you yesterday. That was for dogs with a tight chest or um, a dog perhaps shaped like a French bulldog who has a big chest and is tense there. And it also improves breathing and it could be a good one to use for dogs with any kind of a heart condition to bring awareness to that area. And I told you about a little client Pomeranian I had who had some edema in that area and this would have been a good choice for a wrap for him. And then I also showed you yesterday, which Jack is still modeling, the candy cane wrap, where we came down from the top of the dog through the front legs, but the wrap went on each side, not crossing. And then it went over the dog, and we candy caned our way down his legs. Hence the name, the candy cane wrap. And you can see this on Jack, who is still sporting it from yesterday. So what we're doing today is similar to the candy cane wrap, although it is going from one front leg to the opposite hind leg. So I will show you how to do that first on Jack. Since he's a good volunteer. And for this, you definitely need two wraps. If your dog is really large, you might even need three. And I'm using two inch wraps. Again, if your dog is really large, you might need three inch wraps. And this wrap configuration I find really useful to help a dog become more aware of how they're moving. I find it um, really useful for balance and proprioception. And if you've got a senior dog who might be walking laterally, and I have to say 90% of my client dogs over the age of nine are walking laterally, from long, um, uncorrected balance problems, back problems, stifle problems, you know, paw problems. So this is a great wrap to help those dogs when they're not seeing me. So what a lateral gait is, is the two legs on the same side come forward at the same time like this. And then they go back at the same time. 
a dog should normally walk diagonally with this front one and this back one, and then this front one and this back one. But if they're not doing that, A, your dog has a problem and you probably need to get some chiropractic work. And B, this wrap is another great thing to try. So you have the center of the wrap with the knot and you put that on the top of the dog's withers. Conveniently, Jack has a spot there. And then you're gonna take the ends behind the elbows, just as we did yesterday for that candy cane wrap. And you're gonna bring them up on either side not crossing the heart and cross them on the top. And then the side that is closest to you, which is this one, I'm just going to now candy cane down that leg. And we have so much extra wrap here, I'm just gonna give them a few extra ones. And then the other side comes over and around the outside of the hind leg and candy canes down that side. And we have a lot of extra wrap here too, but oh, the Velcro's inside out. So you can see we have something that looks a lot like the candy cane, although it's now on one front leg and the diagonal back leg. And as you can see, it's gonna really help your dog walk forward with this foot and this foot and then the diagonal pair. So this is a great one to use for dogs with any kind of gait problem, hip dysplasia, um, maybe a dog who's had some back issues. It's a really good one to use for any of your long breeds, bassets, doxies, corgis, <laughs> and other dogs that may be too long for what their breed recommendations may be. I've seen increasingly long dogs because we have so much um, difficulty with finding good breeders these days. So. Again, that's the diagonal leg wrap. It's also a good one to use for a dog that's lost a limb to help find a different balance. They're gonna to have to use their abdominal and midsection muscles quite differently if they've lost a limb. And I had a, a German Shepherd type dog. I say type because he was the biggest dog bar none that I have ever seen or worked with. He was bigger than those big Pyrenees and, you know, the Leon Burgers. He was a really big German Shepherd. And he had been in an accident and had a lot of pins and metal in one hind leg. And on that same side, he had a similar circumstance with the front leg. And it was fine. He worked for years with um, kind of a limp front paw that he would drag and sometimes he would pull himself forward with it, but it was kind of in the way when he was going really fast. And he was such a big dog, um, his person and the vets actually decided that he really needed that extra paw for stability, even though he didn't always use it. Well, lo and behold, when he was a senior fellow, he developed bone cancer and that leg had to come off. And it was quite a big thing because he wasn't exactly friendly with people besides his own and ones he knew really well. And so, um, and his owner was really concerned that he would have trouble walking without that leg. But I was quite confident, and she became so as well, that he would be fine because he'd already been accommodating that leg for so many years. And so he went to the vet, and they took that leg off, and it gave him at least six more months of life. Um, so it was an easy choice for his person who loved him so much. And he, within hours of waking up from the amputation, was ready to go, jumping in his pen, trying to get out, you know, chomping the people that were there a little bit. And they called his owner and said, please come bring him home. So with a dog like that, who had already been used to accommodating that leg, this wrap would have been perfect because see how it's connecting each side of the body. I would have taken his leg that he still had and wrapped it like this, going to the diagonal side. And even before his amputation, I would have used this wrap. He was so crooked in his spine from his strange gait prior to losing his limb that it took a little while for him to um, get straight when he finally lost that limb. And thank God his person um, knew me and knew to bring the dog to me to keep his alignment. Um, at that time, it was very difficult to find people who did um, orthopedic manipulation slash chiropractic work to keep the spine straight. And um, there was also quite hard to find a good acupuncturist. She was going way like 100 miles from here to a quite good acupuncturist, which helped the dog a lot. So if you have a dog that loses a limb, not only is this a great wrap to use before and after, but 
make sure you follow up with all the alternative care that you will need to help that dog adjust. Most dogs do fine with three legs. They run around. They're just as happy as they were with four legs for the most part. And you can do a lot to help them. But it would be great for you to review T-Touch yourself so that you can help work on the dog's body because they do get sore from having one limb missing. So it's very important that you follow up with good care for your dog if you have a dog that loses a limb. And again, in this dog's case, it saved his life. He lived another six months. And when you find something terrible, like your dog has cancer and needs to lose a leg, sometimes you are reeling so much from that diagnosis that you can't even really get on board with what to do or what to do next. And so this person knew immediately she wanted that dog for as long as she could have him. And he loved her and her husband. So it wasn't really any kind of a choice. She knew immediately that leg would have to come off. She found a great surgeon in our area and it was not an issue. Um, and of course she had lots of follow-up care with me and, and she learned a lot of dog massage techniques that she used with him. And it was really, really helpful. And as I said, she had another six months to spend time with him knowing that the end was coming. And so they did a lot of fun things, taking him to places in the car. And it was really a bit of a blessing that they knew when his time was coming so that they could fully enjoy that dog. And he got along just fine with his three legs. So again, this is the diagonal wrap. It goes from one front leg diagonally over to the opposite hind leg. And now we'll put one on Mr. Tristan. Mr. Tristan is searching over here for the sunlight, which we don't have today. It's raining and it's gonna rain really hard this afternoon. So we're kind of enjoying the bit of rain we have this morning. And of course there's no sunshine. So my 45 curtain arrangement here to keep the sun from blinding us in this corner <laughs> has now been all taken down. We have to be flexible. Fisky, can you stand up please? We're gonna put this wrap on you. Come on, hon. Come on, you're gonna have to put your front end here. <laughs> And you're back in there. Good boy. So we're going to start just like we did with the candy cane wrap with this knot on his withers. And then we bring the wrap under each leg. Tristan, people love you. <laughs> Your cuteness. <laughs> Let's get a better view of that young man. There you go. <laughs> bring the wrap around by each front leg. Cross them on the back. And now we have the unusual configuration that you have with a corgi, which is he's long and short. So how the wrap's gonna work, we'll see. So then I take the side closest to me and I'm just gonna candy cane it down that front leg. getting stuck in the fluff. And it's not gonna look like a candy cane because I have literally <laughs> a foot of extra wrap. So I'm just gonna wrap his whole leg. And then we're gonna come diagonally across his back and go around the outside of that leg first. And candy cane my way down his little tootsie. Make sure if you have a bigger dog that you start above the hock um, with your candy cane because you do want to get the upper leg. And of course both Velcros when I did this have ended up on the wrong side so I'm tucking. So here is Tristan in his diagonal wrap. You can see here's his front leg wrapped. See it's like a little coat in the front with each arm being covered. And then let's pivot this side best. <laughs> Come on up. Come on. He says I don't know about that air show mom. <laughs> and then we have it candy caned over to his other hind leg. And I wish I could show you how he walks with this. Some dogs are going to walk really and usually they might roll, they might do some different things to try to see why their legs are connected this way. But part of that is exploring the information that the wrap is giving them. So if your dog is rolling, just hope that your Velcro and your pins are secured well. <laughs> Otherwise, keep an eye on it and fix it. 
but let him explore this as much as he wants to. I find this wrap really, really useful. I do a lot of balance exercises with dogs wearing this wrap because it's really helpful for them to feel that connection from the front to back. And then I also know that the connection from the diagonal sides of the body crossing midline helps connect the right and left brain, which makes the dog seem to be able to think and respond rather than react. So I like this wrap a lot um, specifically for that reason. And as I said, I use it for dogs generally with some kind of gait problem. It's not one that I would pick necessarily right away for a dog that is reactive to other dogs, although it might be one that you try down the line if you've had some success with some of the other wraps. But generally, the leg wraps that I use are for wellness and improving gait and improving balance and proprioception. So this might not be the first one you'd use if you have a reactive dog. But as I said before, these wraps are all good for pretty much everything. If you pick the best wrap for the issue you have, then you have a lot better success. But I have seen people who are learning put wraps on in crazy configurations that come out really well and the dogs change. So I love this one for gait. Um, if a dog has lost a limb, if the dog is... Um, like that dog I told you about yesterday who lost one of his claws. Um, this would be a good one to help him recover his symmetrical normal gait um, by connecting the two sides of his body. And I would encourage you, if you are using this wrap, to go ahead and do it the other way so that you have the other front leg and the other hind leg involved. And this is not one you're going to leave on for a really long time. Maybe 10 minutes would be all you would need for the dog to get used to this wrap. And if your dog is really having trouble with it, what are you looking at? He says, I've got a blue wrap. If your dog is really having trouble with this one, just put it on for a little short time and then take it off and put it back on. It gives them a lot of sensory information, which is one reason I like using this with a dog who's doing really well in a balance program. And then we need to... Um, amp that up one little bit more and make it a little bit more challenging. Because of the connection this asks the dog to have, he can't really um, cheat like he could um, balancing without the wrap on. So if you have a dog that's had like an ACL surgery, this would be a good one to use during the rehab process when you're asking him to do some balance activities. And as I've said many times, the simplest and easiest way to do that on your own is to take some kind of a squishy pillow or foam rubber and put the back end on it and the front end off and the front end on it with the back end off or the whole dog on it. And all of those different ways of putting your dog with the squishy can help improve their abdominal muscles and their balance and their proprioception. And doing it with the wrap um, can really make it an even deeper experience for the dog. So this wrap, I'm going to take it off now and put it on again so that it's on Tristan's other two legs. Come here, Bess. I can't find your leg. Oh, he's falling down. <laughs> Tristan, it's been tough on you. <laughs> having to hold up these wraps on your short self. We'll just start from the beginning again so that you can see it. So you're gonna drape the wrap on the dog's withers. You're gonna go underneath, around the front leg, cross it on the top. Go around the other front leg, cross it on the top, and before we candy cane to the front leg on our side, which is how you should do it just to make it easier, but because I'm showing you the other two legs and giving Tristan that experience of his other two legs, I'm bringing this around to the hind end first. And again, make sure you start above the hock which is the angled bone in the hind leg. Tristan says, why am I getting wrapped up? If you could take a walk, you'd appreciate it more, Bess. <laughs> and then without seeing it, I will wrap his other front leg over here and candy cane my way down. This get your friend Diane is saying hi. And I have no idea what I'm doing over there because I really can't see it at all. But 
Hopefully it's coming out something like a candy cane should. We'll see when I hold him up. <laughs> so here we're doing the other two legs just to give him that whole experience. So you can see we candy cane down this front leg and then we candy cane down diagonally across his back to his other hind leg. And this is a great thing to do if your dog has a lateral gait, which may be a dog with hip dysplasia, any kind of back problem. Um, a lot of German Shepherds would benefit a lot from this. A lot of senior dogs, nearly every senior dog I see comes to me with a lateral gait, meaning the two legs on the same side are going forward at the same time. And this would really help improve that. And the lateral gait, people are like, well, why does that matter if my dog's that walking that way? I'm not going to a dog show. But it does matter because of the strain on the spine and the abnormal way that it's using, um, that the dog is using his paws to walk when he's doing that lateral pattern. In certain horse breeds, of course, that lateral pattern is desirable and that's what they want. Um, but the horse is built very differently to accommodate that. And dogs are not built to have a lateral gait pattern. And we see that in dogs that are very long or that have sore backs, often because they're very long. So this wrap is a really good thing to do if your dog is exhibiting that um, lateral gait pattern. And it can really help your dog feel a lot better, run a lot faster, and enjoy his life more. If you can help him, how do you do with that, this? If you can help him regain um, a more diagonal gait pattern. So, what do you have to say? Anything? Comments? Van Nell from Flounder? He's having a quiet day. We all are with the rain. So tomorrow um, we will be back with conversations with a corgi at around 925. We have a big day tomorrow. There's a parade in Northampton and all kinds of fun things happening. Um, Tristan has often walked in the parade with his mummy and he may tomorrow, I don't know, they are predicting often on rain. And when you're this short <laughs> and you're walking around when it's raining, Poor little Tristan turns into a muddy little animal and he has to come home and go immediately into the shower, which is not a fun time for him. So I may, he's going to get a shower anyway before we go to our tea touch class, but he may stay home tomorrow so that he doesn't have to get soggy and muddy and stressed with the big crowds that come to our town tomorrow. So, um, and today we have a dog to see who's got a sore shoulder and a person and some other things going on. So, um, have a great day yourself if you are on the northeast coast here um, with the rain coming in. It's supposed to be heavy at times this afternoon, all kinds of warnings. Um, please stay warm and dry and spend some time with your pet. And I've also, um, I've added some new things to the media page on my website. I've been um, interviewed for a few more articles, so you can check that out as well. And again, try to um, join our class in Maryland if you'd like to come down and work with Linda Tellington herself. Um, there are still places in the class. So this is Sally Morgan and Tristan Corgi for Conversations with a Corgi, number 51. This is the diagonal leg wrap, which is good for a dog who has lost a limb or a dog who has a lateral gait pattern or a dog that you want to work on his posture and balance. Tristan's very intrigued about where our corgi music is coming from. There we go. Have a great day.